At first, we were just really excited because of the scientific importance. We knew right away we had struck something really big. Shortly after the 2004 tsunami, there was quite a lot of interest from people at EOS and in Aceh to learn more about the history of paleo tsunami in the region. And so we got very fortunate in 2006 when we stumbled upon a sequence of caves along this cliff here. And one in particular contains sort of a mother load of tsunami deposits going about 7,000 years back. We're standing in front of the entrance of a very interesting cave on the west coast of Aceh province, Sumatra. The reason we're here is that the cave contains the deposits from the 2004 tsunami, a pile of sand about 25 centimeters thick. When we came to first look at this cave, we dug down into the deposits of 2004, and to our surprise, we found layer after layer of older tsunamis. So we've engaged in a study to understand whether all the tsunamis are the same size, whether they happen with regular frequency, or whether they happen very irregularly in time. One of the reasons why this cave site is so unique in paleo tsunami studies is because it, it provides a really nice protective environment for deposits. Uh, another nice thing about cave environments is after tsunami sands are deposited, we get built up of organic material and sand and we get droppings from the bats that roost in the ceiling. And this forms protective layers over the sand deposits, but it also contains organic material that we can use to date these periods in between tsunamis. The cave is not an easy or safe place to work. It's dark inside, there's a lot of drop-offs, holes, and other pits. Uh, so we have to take a lot of extra precautions to light the cave, uh, to make sure we don't leave our stuff lying around. Uh, but in the end, it's, it's certainly well worth it for the scientific value we've gotten from this site.